Hi, I'm Tom Merrick with Silver Spring Networks. I want to talk to you today about our smart cities and smart streetlights demonstration. Using the multi-purpose network, utilities can add additional applications to the network that lets them do things like controlling streetlights. Uh, why would a utility want to control streetlights? One of the problems that utilities have is many times they're charged with maintaining streetlights and operating streetlights for a municipality or a city. In some cases, the city owns the streetlights. Uh, in other cases, the utility owns the streetlights. But in many cases, the utilities are involved with maintaining the operation uh, of those devices. An example is Florida Power and Light services about 122,000 phone calls a year talking or receiving complaints about streetlight outages. So then they have to go find those street lights and a lot of times documentation isn't that great. So what this system allows them to do is understand when the street light is malfunctioning. The street light could be on during the day or it could be failing to come on at night. This is a Silver Springs Gen 4 module and it has the ability to communicate with the entire Silver Spring mesh network. It has a couple of advantages. It becomes a relay point to strengthen the mesh of the existing Silver Spring network. It also has metering capabilities, so the utility has the opportunity to meter and bill on a per light basis. Many utilities now will offer a flat rate fee for X number of street lights for X number of dollars. Uh, if the business case so demands, they can actually use the metrology on the street light itself and bill for actual usage. So the benefit of having an intelligently controlled street light is now the utility knows when the device is off, when it's malfunctioning, and they know exactly where it's at. That means they can dispatch a crew during the day, during the daylight hours, uh, when it's safer to do operations uh, in the street. Many utilities have to pay their, their employees time and a half or double time because they're out working at night and there may be even a, a safety adder on top of that for a dangerous situation. So Silver Spring offers several different types of photosol controllers. Uh, the one I just showed you a moment ago is made by a company called Selk. Uh, so it's a little different form factor. This one in particular is what's called a three pin device. So this is good for retrofitting to existing street lights, high pressure sodium or mercury vapor, whatever the utility uh, has in the street currently. Uh, standard socket, so it's, it fits on a standard NEMA socket, push in, twist, and it's locked in and it's operational uses a photocell controller, a little photodiode, so when the clouds come over, when it gets dark, it automatically turns on and off, um, as you'd expect, or it can be scheduled through software. A different version that we have is made by a, copy, or by a company called SunTech. SunTech provides us with a seven pin uh, socket, so it's the typical on and off, but the, seven, the additional pins here that you see on the bottom uh, allow us to do dimming for dimming capable fixtures, such as the new LED fixtures that are coming out. Another photocell that I've got operating behind me on the light at the top is made by Simcon. It's a little different form factor. It's a seven pin dimmable as well, but it gives utilities a different choice uh, for aesthetics. The last one I want to show you is an integrated controller module into uh, an LED fixture. This is typically called uh, a Cobra head fixture or in some cases a dragon head fixture. And this is something you'd find on a highway or a, on, a, on a busy public street. Inside we have integrated the network control module. So this is the same thing that's inside of the, the photo cell, but it's mounted inside the, uh, the fixture here. This is from a company called LED Roadway Lighting, or LRL, and they're the only ones so far that have integrated our, our internal network controls. Uh, functionally, they're the same. Still can do measurement on the usage of electricity per the individual lights, and you've got photo controls, and since it's an LED, you can dim it. So the product that we use to manage the, street, the intelligent street lights is a product called Streetlight Vision. We bought Streetlight Vision from a company in France uh, not too long ago. And even though it's branded Streetlight Vision, it's a management package that's capable of managing many different things in addition to streetlights. Things like parking sensors and traffic flow sensors or uh, motion sensors and gunshot sensors. Many different things could be managed through this software package. We're going to click into the real-time control uh, on this screen. And then we're going to go identify the street light or group of street lights that we're interested in. And if you can see on the screen here, I've got a street light that is currently off. I've got some, an indication of what percentage uh, the street light is on. And then I've got an, some metering indication. The metering indication is going to show me voltage, maximum, minimum voltage. So it gives utilities some idea of how the voltage is being served to the street light. And some metrics about the street light, its power factor, the temperature, the ambient temperature, and the amount of lumens or, or the amount of light that is falling on that street light sensor. We can easily turn that light on and the light is off to our, our right over here. 
by clicking on the on button, it, the software sends a signal through the network to the light and turns the light on. Now, interesting thing here that utilities can do or that cities can do, we've got the ability, as I mentioned before, to turn the light on and off as either clouds come over or as it gets dark. But what happens if you've got a, an event, a concert, a fireworks display, and typically the utility or the community will want the lights dimmed down or turned off altogether. While the event's happening and when the event's over, they want the lights to come back up so that people can leave the, leave the area uh, safely. So imagine that we have a, a fireworks display and we want to dur turn the lights down to, eh, call it 20%. So we move the slider down here on this light or group of lights and the lights dim down to 20%. At the end of the event, you want to move people out of the area Go ahead and turn that light back on. The light comes on to full brightness, and now people have an, an easy, safe path to get out of, out of the area. So these are a lot of the things that, that we're enabling through our multi-purpose network from Silver Spring, and gives utilities and cities and municipalities the ability to, to use this for uh, increasing safety or increasing convenience to uh, consumers and, and the public.